another beautiful Texas State Park. Let's go. I'm so glad we picked a gorgeous day to come visit y'all at South Llano Park. But before we get started, is it South Llano, South Llano? <laughs> Most people in this area know this park, uh, much like the town in Texas, as the South Llano River State Llano, Park. Llano, okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know it doesn't feel right always saying that, but to the locals in the area, South Llano. <laughs> good, good to know. Tell us a little bit about the history of this beautiful area. So uh, Walter Buck is the gentleman who's responsible for um, this becoming a state park. He moved to this area in 1910 as a rancher. Um, obviously you can see a lot of ranch life remnants still in the area. And Walter Buck Jr. is actually the gentleman who had gifted this park property to the state of Texas to become a state park. He gifted 2,600 acres. Wow. 2,000 acres, our rugged backcountry, was gifted as a wildlife management area. The 600 acres of the river bottom you see behind us was the state park originally. And then the two lands were merged as a 2,600 acre state park in 2011. Wow, there must be so many different things you can do here. Yes, we have a wide variety of amenities. It really is a state park for anyone. We have um, 67 campsites. Um, as We have walk-in campsites for tent camping. We have a camp loop with water and electricity for RV goers. We have a primitive campsite for people to backpack in and out, which is a great opportunity for beginning backpackers. We have two miles of river frontage on the South Llano River. The South Llano River has never gone dry in the oh, history. Wow of recorded <laughs> river levels, um, which is an incredible opportunity for Texans to be able to enjoy um, cooler spring-fed temperatures year-round. Yeah. And then we actually have 23 miles of hiking and biking opportunities in our awesome. rugged backcountry um, that a lot of people don't know about. It's an incredible trail system through the park. Well, I'm really excited to check out one of those trails today and hopefully see some wildlife while we're here. Yes, we have incredible wildlife viewing opportunities. It's one of my favorite things about the park. Um, we have a really high number of the nine-banded armadillo. Whoa. Here, I mean, they're really, they're everywhere. <laughs> we have over 200 50 species of birds that visit this wow. state park. Um, one of the best ways to view them is in one of our four bird blinds we have around the park. Um, we'll be visiting with Randy here in a bit. I'll introduce you to Randy, one of our birders in the area. He's incredibly knowledgeable and he can share with you a ton of the different species in the area. That sounds awesome. I'm excited to check out one of those bird blinds awesome. and, and also see more of this beautiful area. Yes, I'd love to take you on a hike now. Let's do it. All right. get calories for this and get my <laughs> steps in today. It's a good little pump up. Yeah, it is so beautiful. at its best. We still have about halfway to go, maybe a, maybe a third of the way to go <laughs> um, to the top, but a lot of people do think that's the top of the overlook and they get back and they let us know and we're like, no, it's a little bit further. And, <laughs> you gotta keep and going. the view at the end is well worth it. So we always wanna make sure. So yeah, this trail is actually only about a year old. Oh, wow. um, the overlook was accessible by a service road, but it wasn't, it wasn't just a great switch back up with the great views that we were just seeing. Um, it was just a walk up to the top, you see the view and you come back down, but yeah. um, people really enjoy this trail now. Yeah. It's, it's a lot better experience. No, I love it already and we're not even halfway there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe two thirds, maybe two, two thirds. thirds. Yeah. We made it! <laughs> we finally made it to the overlook. Wow, this is incredible.
So here we are at Agarita Bird Blind, one of our four bird blinds here at South Lano River, um, each with its own water feature. I want to introduce you to Randy Helton, um, our local birder we have here in Junction. Oh. He's a retired biologist with Texas Parks and Wildlife, and he's going to have all the knowledge you want to know about birding. <sighs> nice. as soon as we walked into the bird blind, yeah. not even a minute in, and yeah. we saw four or five different beautiful kinds of birds. We've seen uh, the northern cardinal, the red bird, That's as everybody knows. Beautiful, beautiful red bird beautiful, I beautiful saw. bright red bird. Yeah. Uh, we've seen uh, uh, black-throated sparrows uh, come to the water feature, some white-crowned sparrows, which is an overwintering species. And uh, you know, Junction is located where we get birds from the eastern U.S. and from the western U.S. that kind of mix right here. And the county, it's a dry county. We don't get a lot of rain during the year, but we got a, two rivers. So we have water. And birds, you know, there's three things they, all, all forms of wildlife need is food, water, and cover. And you notice the bird blind, you notice the cover. We, the, they've been constructed within the natural cover. And South Lano River State Park kind of pioneered the, the building of these bird blinds. These bird blinds have served as a pattern for some other parks. Some people just want to like, want to set and enjoy the birds coming in and see something different. Some people will travel hundreds of miles <laughs> to go see something that maybe a rare bird showed up. And we want all of them involved. And the bird blinds offer them that opportunity to come and for the park visitors to have something to see, as well as all the other features that the park offers, the hiking, the swimming, the tubing, yeah. all of those great things that this park offers. That's one of the best parts about South Lano State Park. No matter where you are, you'll always have a great view.